Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video and welcome back to, so before, welcome back to the web application penetration testing series. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use Durbuster to discover uh, directories and files on a website or a web application. All right, so before we get started, uh, this is a series that I really want to complete. And again, we've started from the fundamentals and I still want to cover any of the other exploitation methods. Now, when it comes down to the tool we'll be using, a lot of you have been telling me to use Burp Suite, but most of the functionality I'm going to demonstrate will require the pro version of Burp, of Burp Suite. So let me know which one you want me to use. I can either use Burp Suite or a Zap, uh, which I personally prefer because the licenses of Burp Suite Pro are really expensive. I have one, but I am concerned about you guys. Uh, so if you have one already and you want me to continue with Burp Suite, then let me know and I'll continue the series like that. Uh, the other series are still continuing. Don't worry. I'm just working on a lot of videos right now that I really want to put forward. Uh, but don't worry about that. Having said that, that's, uh, that's, I'm, I'm gonna end that discussion there. Let's get started with this video. So, um, you might be asking yourself, what is Durbuster? Or if you haven't heard of Durbuster, let me explain it to you. All right. So Durbuster is essentially, uh, a tool that uh, was developed by OWASP, the Open Web Application Security Project, and essentially uses a brute forcing to find commonly used directories and file names on servers. All right, so this tool is extremely useful for those of you who are doing CTFs or for those of you who are bug bounty hunters because essentially it allows you to understand the structure of a web uh, web application or a website in terms of the files and directories and how they are structured. All right, so why is this important? Well, this is important because this will help us understand how we can attack a site or what type of attack vectors we can we can we can find you know so for example if i had a web application and i'm going to demonstrate that right now and i scanned it with Durbust and we found some hidden directories and hidden files we can use these as attack vectors all right so as i said it also allows you to find hidden directories or uh, or files that are hidden from the public so this can also lead you to uh, to finding uh, additional resources that could have been hidden away by the devs that like for example uh, admin pages etc etc all right so how does it work well really simply uh, once you start up Durbuster, and uh, again as i mentioned it uses brute forcing so i'll explain where word lists come into play um, so you open it up and you select the url of the web application or the website and you specify the port. The port is is, de is definitely going to be HTTP, so uh, either a port 80 or port 443, and then you select the word list. Now, in this case, Kali Linux already has a Dur uh, Durbuster word list uh, that uh, that are designed. It has three of them that are designed for different types of scenarios, and I'll explain them as we move along. All right, and essentially how it works is once you start the brute force attack, it will send HTTP GET requests and it will wait for the response from the server or the web, the web application. If it gets a 200 uh, response, that means that yes, that directory exists. All right, if it, get, if it gets a bad response, meaning like 400 or 403, meaning no access, then it'll, it'll, it'll know that that directory or file doesn't exist. So it's essentially testing directories on the server against this, uh, this word list. So it will check, for example, is there a temp folder? If it sends a temp request, to the server, it gets a response, a positive response, then it knows it's there and then it will enumerate them. All right, so let's start off uh, re uh, really, really simply here. So I'm on Kali Linux, I have the OS uh, broken web application right here, and I'm going to be demonstrating uh, two scenarios. So you can see I'm running that here, and that has a lot of vulnerable web applications, but the whole idea is to demonstrate how directories can be found. All right, and why this is extremely important, especially for a web application penetration tester. All right, so uh, I'm going to open up Firefox, and as you can see, I have the open web application uh, project right here, the OASP BWAP, as they call it, and it has plenty of uh, of ways of me testing this. But what if I was to just test the entire server? All right, so this is a web server. What if I was to test the entire web server? Well, I'm guessing that there are going to be a lot of files and directories. So what we can do is uh, we can start off with a perfect example of how this will work is let's say you're targeting a WordPress site. So I'm going to open up the broken WordPress. Now, of course, this is a very old one and we're not really exploiting anything. But uh, by using this example, it will let us understand how we can enumerate the different directories and folders, uh, uh, you know, on, on this WordPress installation. 
or if you are target targeting a WordPress site, this is the way you do it. So I'm going to copy the URL with the uh, with the directory right here. So it, we know it's in the WordPress folder because that is the root directory of the of the web server and we're selecting the WordPress installation. But for the website, you'll select the URL. All right. Uh, and as for the port, we know that this is the default HTTP port, which means it's port 80. All right. So I have Durbuster right here. If you can't find it, just uh, you can use the start menu and type in Durbuster. It's going to be like so. Just just click on it and give it a few seconds to start up. So again, it was designed by the OWASP team, so it works really, really well. And uh, again, this is something that I'm sure if you if you are a web application penetration tester or you do do uh, the CTF challenges, then you'll you'll know that you use this tool a lot. All right. So we in here we have the target URL, and that's where we we would paste it. All right. So um, we can paste it right here. So control V and that is the URL. Now in the work method, if you want to, if you want the scan to be faster, you can use the get requests. But what we can do is auto switch them uh, from the head and get and that will give us a more robust or a more accurate uh, response rate. All right. So in terms of the number of threads, this is how fast you want. Uh, you want the scan or the brute force to be. So the faster, the better, depending on your hardware. And uh, of course, you don't want to overload the server. So I'm just going to go hit click on go faster. That's probably works the best for me. But if you want it to run faster, uh, then that means it's going to it's going to have multiple requests and threads being sent from your computer. All right. So I like keeping it at just 200 threads, which is go faster. And because I'm testing my own web server, I can, you know, I can pretty much increase it to whatever I want. Uh, so uh, usually if you're talking about a bigger server or a bigger web application, then it doesn't really matter how many requests or how many threads you use. Uh, it will not really affect the performance of the web server. But if I was to run it at maybe a maximum speed, you would see that the web server would be lagging out, um, you know, out of the amount of requests that are being sent. Uh, because, you know, you have to understand it from a fundamental point of view. We are requesting the different web pages and the server has to process them. So if the, if the, if the server is not running on, on, you know, good resources, like it's running on one gigabyte of RAM, it's very easy to make it lag out and to actually cause some sort of a denial of service just because of the amount of requests. But in this case, we are performing it, you know, with a, with an ethical perspective. So now you want to select a list based brute force or you can use a pure brute force, but I don't recommend that. That doesn't really work. And you now need to select your word list, your Durbuster word list. Now, by default on Kali Linux and on Parrot OS, these are found in the user share folder under word list. And you can find the Durbuster uh, word list right there. So I'm going to show you that right now. So I'm going to browse. I'm going to go to my root and I'm going to go into user and I'm going to go into share. And let's go into word lists here. Let's see if I can find it. It's obviously with a W uh, where it where is it? Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Where is word lists? Um, sorry if I can't see this. Yeah, there we are. Sorry about that word lists. And you now want to go into Derb Buster. All right. So there is going to be a folder called Derb Buster. And now you might be a little bit confused. Well, really, you don't need to need need to be confused. That's why I'm here. So uh, as a beginner, you might be wondering, like, which one is better now? As an advanced penetration test, I know which one is the best. In most cases, it's going to be the medium, the directory list 2.3 medium.txt. Now, if you're scanning a very small web application that that's not that really complex, like a simple HTML site, uh, you know, HTML, CSS, whatever you want to call it, um, then I would recommend the small one. But if you're scanning a, a big site like a WordPress installation or a Joomla installation, then you, you should use the medium one. This will work. 99% of the time, unless your your um, your requests are being blocked by either a web application firewall or by the uh, the host. So I'm just going to select list. All right. And now in terms of these other options, you can see it's uh, it's going to essentially brute, brute force the directories, the files. It's going to be recursive, which is great. And the directory, you must specify the directory if it is if you are trying to perform a scan that is directory sensitive. All right. And uh, standard uh, start point, just leave it like that. And you now want to hit start. All right. So once you start, it's going to start brute forcing the web server against. Uh, it's going to start sending the requests. And if it gets the responses, the positive responses, it's going to uh, it's going to understand that, yes, that directory does exist. 
Now you can see we have a response that is being sent here and it's going to tell, uh, tell you that it is unable to determine a consistent fail response, which means uh, some directories and files are being, uh, you're getting a negative or uh, you, you're getting a, a no access response, meaning that that directory doesn't exist. So what you can do is just hit cancel to these ones and hit yes and it's going to continue scanning the other ones. Now, of course, down here, you can see since it's performing a brute force, you can look at the current speed, which uh, varies dependent on the amount of directories, the average speed, um, and it'll tell you the total amount of requests done out of the amount that could be done depending on, on, on the word list that you have selected. And finally, you have the time to finish. Now, of course, this will vary dependent on a lot of uh, factors, but mostly it depends on the the uh, the speed of the scan that you've selected and the and the word list. So you have your scan information here. It's going to tell you what uh, folders and files it's testing. And uh, in here, you can see the results in terms of directories and files that it was able to find. And in the results, it, it, this is going to give you the directory structure as to how files and folders are being structured on the web application. Now, by default right now, you can see the amount, uh, the files and folders that it has found are, for example, the WordPress register.php. So if we open that, if you right click on it, you can open it in the URL or you can view the response that it gave and you can copy it. You understand you get the basic functionality here and then you can open it in your browser. So again, you see that we are finding files that we otherwise wouldn't have known existed. Now, of course, for a default WordPress installation, you would have guessed that this does exist. But remember, most people, are, for, for, for most other installations on configure figurations, this can be a great way of finding files and folders that you didn't know existed. And uh, again, discovering them is very, very important. And this can give you different attack vectors. For, for example, if I went to the admin.php and it forced me to log in, that might be a good place to start brute forcing if I had credentials. If not, you can choose select another attack vector. So let me just move back here. You can see we have the register page here, which we just clicked on. Let's uh, look at the WordPress login.php. So I'm going to open that up in the browser. Now you can see the server is not responding. And that's another point that I wanted to point out. If you want to be as, uh, you know, right now we are being as promiscuous as possible because we, it's not really a, a web application that is delivering service to other people, but because it's hosted on my local air network. So in this case, you can see we are performing a type of denial of service. And that's because the server, I've allocated very, very minimal resources to this uh, virtual machine. So that's why it's kind of lagging out. All right. So that's something to take into consideration. Now, if I was to, to pause the attack, like so, if I was to just pause it, remember you can pause it and you can stop it. And uh, let me just go back here and let's see if we can reload these pages. They, they should be able to to be reloaded quicker now. Let me, let me just load that up and uh, we can close this one. Let's see if the WordPress register page does open up. Uh, if this uh, virtual, yeah, there we are. So you can see, uh, even though this is a very old WordPress installation that we were causing it to lag out. So uh, always keep that in mind that the amount of threads that you select can affect the performance uh, of the website of, or of the web application. And you don't want to cause any, uh, any impact to customers if you're performing the test on a real world working web application or website. All right. Just something you might want to take into consideration. So we're going to resume it. And of course, I'm not going to expect to find anything weird here. Although this WordPress installation is designed to be vulnerable. So you can also change the number of threads running right here. So if I wanted it to run, uh, you know, maybe on 10 threads, which is quite slow, that means you'll get uh, the enumeration process will take longer. Uh, so it's all about balancing your resources and understanding what you're trying to look for. Now, of course, this can be a very, very useful tool when doing bug bounties or, uh, or CTF for that matter, especially hack the box. Now, for those of you who are talking about hack the box, I'm telling you the videos are coming as soon as the machine gets retired, I'll post the video. I've been working on a lot of them and this is a tool that you'll be using a lot and you'll see me using a lot and you'll be shocked as to how many files you, you'll be able to find using Durbuster. You know, files like, for example, um, flags that are encoded, like, like that's an example of one of the, uh, of the, uh, machines that I was doing last night on Hack the Box. Actually, uh, I was able to find one of the flags, but it was encoded and I had to decode it and I got the user flag. 
and essentially I, I not exactly the flag i don't want to throw out too much uh, i don't want to throw too much out there but i was able to get uh, a lot of resources using uh using the buster so don't worry about that more videos are on their way i'm focusing on increasing the amount of videos i can pump out uh so hopefully that goes well sorry about that notification um it always seems to do this uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Sorry about the uh, the the talking and the blabbering that I was doing in, in between. But yeah, that's going to be it for this video, guys. If you found value in this video, please leave a like down below. If you have any suggestions or questions, let me know in the comment section or on my social networks or on the website. And I'll be sure to leave your response. That being said, that's going to be it for this video, guys. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace.